Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Ish. Welcome back to another video on my channel, Just Money. For those of you that are new to my channel, Just Money, I pretty much go over financial related topics such as credit, real estate, loans, etc. So if that's something you're into or want to get more familiar with, then you're probably going to want to consider subscribing. But in this video, I'm going to be going over why you should start building your credit today. And I'll also be giving a little advice on how to build or rebuild your credit. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Okay, so building your credit might be one of the best choices you will ever make in your lifetime. And the reason for that being is there's so many benefits just from having good credit. From being able to leverage other people's money to make you money, to being able to rent or buy a home or even finance a car if you don't have all the money up front to make that purchase. And for those that don't know what financing means, it pretty much just means borrowing money with a promise to repay it back with some additional fees or interest over a period of time. For example, some people might finance a car. These people are getting what you would call an auto loan. And how this works is the lender pays for the car up front with their money and you would just pay them back with your money plus interest since they were providing you the money. That is financing. And do remember, the better your credit is, the better your interest rates will be on loans and you'll actually be able to receive loans to even begin with. And you'll also be prepared for the future. Like if you're ever in a pinch or a sticky situation, then you can use your credit card in the event of an emergency and then just pay back later versus relying on somebody and asking them to borrow money. Without having good credit in America, you will quickly realize how hard life can be. So I would always suggest that you start building your credit up if you haven't yet already. I have plenty of other videos on my YouTube channel discussing on how to build your credit up, but I will, however, go over just a few in this video really quick. One thing that I've seen a lot of parents do to get their kids started at an early age as far as building their credit is getting added as an authorized user. And how this works is the primary card holder can add somebody on their credit. And by doing so, you reap the benefits by inheriting their positive history. So it's a good stepping stone if you want to build your credit. Just make sure the person you're doing this with has a good credit history. And also it doesn't have to be your parents. It could typically be any person that is the primary card holder, but just make sure they have good credit. <laughs> but another way to start building your credit up is by getting something called a secure secured credit card. Now this credit card is a little different from your average credit card, the unsecured credit card. But you can typically get a secured credit card at any credit union bank for the most part. And pretty much if you don't have good credit or credit at all for that matter, then you can use this card to start building your credit or start rebuilding your credit. To get started on a secured credit card, they're going to need an initial security deposit from you. Because the way how this works is since you don't have good credit or no credit at all, then they don't really trust you to have a credit card. So what they're gonna require from you is a security deposit. And whatever you choose that security deposit to be, then that's gonna be your initial credit limit. Like, let's say for example, you make a $200 deposit, then that deposit, your $200 deposit, then becomes your initial credit limit. Then you would just use it like a regular credit card and pay back every month thus bring your credit up. But the reason they make you do a security deposit is just in case in the event that you don't make the payments. So if you don't make the payments, then they'll just use your security deposit to pay back what you couldn't. And they're not taking any losses or risks because the money was already yours to begin with. But by having a secured credit card and making your monthly payments every month, then your credit will slowly but surely start to rise. Just make sure you're paying your credit card on time, like on the due date or before the due date, because 35% of your credit score is based off your payment history. So don't forget to make your payments on time. And always remember the difference between a secured credit card and a unsecured credit card is a secured credit card, you need a security deposit. And an unsecured credit card, they just give you a credit limit because your credit's already good. Okay, now 30% of your credit score is gonna be based off your credit utilization. Now, if you have a credit card with a thousand dollar limit, then I would always suggest to keep it under 30%. So 30% of a thousand is gonna be $300. So if you have a thousand dollar credit limit then make sure you spend less than three hundred dollars on it because if your credit utilization is over thirty percent then the credit bureaus think you're under distress and you can't handle all the debt given to you so your credit's gonna start to go down so i would always advise to never go over thirty percent and this goes for individual accounts and your whole credit so don't go over thirty percent but if you really want to be a credit rock star, then I would always suggest to keep your credit utilization under 10% because if you keep it under 10%, then the credit bureaus view you as 
really responsible. Now about 15% of your credit score is gonna come from the different types of credit that you have. The credit bureaus wanna see how well you are at juggling different types of credit. A few different types of credit, for example, could be your auto credit, and your mortgage credit. Then about 10 to 12% of your credit score is gonna come from how new your credit portfolio is. A bunch of new credit all at once is a red flag because the credit bureaus view this as a distress signal because you need a whole bunch of new money out of nowhere. And again, this is only about 10 to 12% impact on your credit because you might have a low utilization and you might make your payments on time, but you might just like having a bunch of new rewards cards or sign up bonuses or different kinds of credit coming in. Now about five to 7% of your credit is gonna be coming from the length history of your credit. Now this isn't really as important as all the other things I mentioned because you can have a short but good history and that's a whole lot better than having a long but bad history. So check it out, 65% of your credit score is gonna be coming from your credit utilization and your payment history. Those are the top two things. That's where the majority of your credit score is gonna be coming from. So just make sure you're paying all your payments on time and make sure your credit utilization is under 30% unless you want to be a credit rock star keep it under 10% now if you guys would like a super accurate credit report then there's a website called annualcreditreport.com now I'm not sponsored by these guys by any means but I am highly recommending that you guys check them out because they'll show you all three of your credit report scores and they'll be super accurate but the only catch is though you only can do this for free one time a year and there's also an app called Experian you can download it check your credit um, you don't have to buy anything by any means. You can use the app for free. I personally pay $20 a month because one of the perks from paying $20 a month is you have the ability to lock and unlock your credit at will on that app. And that's just amazing. Being able to unlock or lock your credit at will could come in handy in the event that there has been identity theft. Not saying my identity has been theft, but it happens. If somebody has your social security information or any other personal information for that matter, then they can use your information to get loans for themselves. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is called identity theft. But by having the ability to simply lock your credit at will, then these guys won't stand the chance when they're trying to get loans or any other stuff in your name. Then when you would like to get a loan for yourself, you can simply just unlock your credit and then have your credit get ran and as soon as it's done getting ran then you can lock it back up. So if you think any of your information has been compromised then I would definitely recommend to start with this route. But back to credit cards, do not get a credit card if you're already thinking about maxing out your limit as soon as you get a credit card, do not do that. Because then you'll find yourself with not so much good credit and then you're gonna find yourself in a vicious cycle making payments every month and it's gonna suck and it's not gonna be cool once you're making those payments and it's really hard to get out of debt. But also avoid the balance myth. And what I mean by balance myth is you don't always have to carry a debt on your credit card, but I will recommend that you always use your credit card if you don't have a balance on it. Just use it for gas or something. I made this mistake before and one of my credit cards got shut down. They closed my credit card and that is not good. Because once a card or account is closed, then you lose all of that credit history. So use your credit cards every so often. And the reason for that being is if you have a credit card, and you've had it for a long time and has no balance on it and it's just inactive then they're gonna go ahead and close your card for you they're gonna close the account for you and once they close that you're gonna lose all the credit history and your credit's gonna start to go down and again I've made this mistake before where I haven't used the card in a while I left it with there was no balance on it at all it was inactive and they shut down my card out of nowhere and I was like damn so I had to learn the hard way so don't be like me use the card every so often you don't have to use it all crazy use it to buy like a stick of gum or something <laughs> You'll be fine. But also there's these things called hard inquiries. When a lender or company requests to review your credit report as part of the loan application, then the request is recorded as a hard inquiry. And hard inquiries do impact your credit score depending on how many you got. They take about two years to come off your credit report, then after that your credit will go back up. If you have an unfamiliar hard inquiry, then you can go ahead and talk to that with the credit bureaus and they can go ahead and dispute that for you. In other words, take that off of your credit if you're unfamiliar with that hard inquiry. But back to establishing good credit. Now, if you have a credit score of 740 to 760, then typically you're gonna get the same rates and pricing as someone who has an 850 score. Your credit is your credibility. No credit, no loan. If you have credit, but it's not where it could be, in other words, not so much good credit, then the bank will still give you a loan, but 
they're able to charge you a higher interest rate since your credit isn't where it could be. Because since your credit isn't where it could be, then they're able to make more money off you and charge you more interest on your car, house, etc., whatever it is. Good credit equals low interest rates and it can help save you money, people. And earlier I mentioned by having good credit, you can actually leverage other people's money to make you money. And one of the ways I was referring to was through real estate. Majority of people don't have the funds to pay for a house or rental properties upfront in cash. So what typically these guys do is get something called mortgage loans. And you have to have good credit to be eligible to obtain a mortgage loan. There's different types of loan programs to where you can have a credit score as low as 580 and probably less than that to be honest. But the higher your credit score, the better your interest rate will be. So in other words, you wouldn't be paying as much money back on the loan if you have good credit. But by being able to get a mortgage loan, then you're able to get rental properties now. If you're buying a multifamily residence, then you're able to rent out some of the units to other people people and that will contribute towards paying your mortgage down and you'll probably even receive some cash flow on top and while this is all happening the market might go up and equity in your property might increase over time so your home would be more valuable than it was than when you first purchased it it might go up 300k 500k 800k a million dollars whatever but equity goes up in properties over time. But that's ultimately what I meant when I said you can leverage other people's money to make yourself money just by having good credit. And obviously you're going to need other things other than good credit to obtain a mortgage loan, like putting money down, etc. But in this video, we're talking about why you should have good credit and how to build credit. I have plenty of other videos on my channel discussing financial things. So if that's something you guys are into, feel free to browse around, feel free to browse around on my channel. And if you guys are enjoying this video, I would appreciate if you guys slap a like on it. it truly means a lot but i have plenty of other videos on my channel because all we do on this channel is talk about just money and i also want to point out if you're not ready for a mortgage loan and you just still want to rent around for a while then you also need good credit for that when you're trying to rent a place so credit is king whether you're renting a house or apartment then i would say the minimum credit score you want to aim for at least is a 700 because that's what these guys look for that's what property managers look for and that's what landlords look for. Having a 700 plus credit score can take you a very long way. Even when you're trying to get an auto loan, the better your credit score, the better your rates and pricing is going to be. And the credit bureaus tend to check your credit every 14 to 30 days, so that's when you should be expecting credit changes. I'm wrapping up this video now, but the biggest thing I can leave you with is to work on your credit if you haven't yet already. And always remember to keep your credit utilization under 30% and to always always make your payments on time. Having good credit goes a very long way, so always remember folks, with great credit comes great responsibility. If you guys made it to the end of the video, then I truly do appreciate you guys. We are at 2,652 subscribers at the time of this recording, so truly appreciate everybody that watches the videos. And for those that don't know, I do post every two to three days, so I'll be posting two, three times a week on this channel. and. You probably gonna want to consider subscribing because we talk about financial related things. This channel is strictly about just money and that's what it is. I'm also a real estate agent here in Southern California. So if you're ever looking to buy or sell a home, then you can hit me up. I'll leave all my information in the description below and I'll see you guys in a few days. Thanks for watching.